Gospel Tangents is supported by users like you. Please support us at gospeltangents.com or on Patreon. It's the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. And for his daily Mormon history podcast, I'm Rick Bennett. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about the communist period in Czechoslovakia. How did Wallace Toronto deal with that? I was surprised to find out that he was on the most wanted list in Czechoslovakia simply because he was a mission president for the LDS Church. So we're going to find out more with Dr. Mary Jane Woodger, author of Mission President or Spy, and uh, find out more about the communist period. So you won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. All right. So they get out of Czechoslovakia in August 31st, 1939. Yeah. And then... And they will come home. To and, Utah. Yeah. Yeah. So they spent some time, was it in Switzerland or in England or where Copenhagen. Were they? Copenhagen, that Denmark. comes through Denmark. Okay. And then they will come home through New York and and end up during the war they're they're here. Okay. And so he's kind of running the mission. I mean it's not really much of a mission, I guess. You really the during the war you really don't have any contact between, you know, uh Czechoslovakia and, But he's you know. probably the highest I mean you could oh. think of him as like the stake president oh, over for sure. Czechoslovakia. Absolutely. Kind of an Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so Absolutely. he's still trying to maintain contact with members and give advice yes, and yes. things like and that. And he he would send them and and they would have code words, you know, like a code word for a baptism or a, you know, because uh, the mail was all looked at. So he oh. would he would have to, you know, couch what he was saying within other language. Okay. Yeah. So they were still doing baptisms secretly. Trying to, yeah, yeah. but they weren't meeting. They weren't allowed to meet at all. Okay. So during the war, it was pretty tough. COVID, COVID-like. <laughs> so, um, can you tell us anything else about Czechoslovakia during these times? Well, the communists just will come in and um, just take away so many freedoms, and uh, the people will be so. Even though it was a bloodless um, invasion. Um, it's. They talk about this one city in Czechoslovakia that hid some Jews, and, and Hitler will come in and completely destroy the entire city, burn it, because and kill they hid everybody Jews. because they'd hidden some Jews. Mm. So um, you know they they even though their invasion was bloodless, they still they still suffered so so incredibly. One of the things I remember from David Nelson's book, Moroni and the Swastika, because um, he talked about the mission that's in Germany, and I don't remember the mission president's name, but he was there when Hitler was trying to come to power. And at the time, they weren't sure if the Nazis were going to win or the communists were going to win. And he what was a like, choice. I don't know. I don't know who to vote for because they're both really bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so I think it's one of those things, especially in 2024, we don't recognize how much the communists and the Nazis hated each other. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, you had this fight within Germany that the Nazis won eventually. And then, of course, they invaded Russia. A lot of Russians died and... And in fact, I think more Russians died than any oh, other nationality. Oh, for sure. In World yes. War II. And so yeah. they really hated each oh, other. Oh, yeah. Um, so can you talk about the, the change from the Nazi regime in Czechoslovakia versus communism? Was one better or were they both just equally bad? Well, I think, I think because Nazis are there during the war that you have warlike conditions. Rather than, you know, the communists will come in in February of 1948 in Czechoslovakia and there'll be a communist coup, 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 coup <laughs> where they take over the, the government. And so um, I... Another I, bloodless coup, though? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Pretty much. Get rid of the other government. And so, you know, Wally will be there. In uh, 1946, again, he's called into the office, and would you go to Czechoslovakia? Czechoslovakia yeah. Okay, go back. so the war basically ends in 44, 45. 45. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so he gets called back as mission president. So yeah. he's never, even when he's back in Utah, he probably gets a job, he's working, yes, yeah. but he's never yeah. officially released no, as mission never, president. No, never, never. 
Yes. And so 46 comes, he goes back. Is Czechoslovakia kind of democratic at this point? Yes, okay. somewhat, yeah. But okay. then you, you know, so he's there a year and a half, and then you have the coup, and the communists are going to take over. So by 1950, as I said, he's considered, you know, the top, one of the top wanted spies by the communists. Because he had served under, well, kind of under the Nazis. Well, I don't think it had to do with the Nazis. Okay. I think it was because he was American and he was bringing missionaries in and they were leery of religion and they were leery of these young men coming in. And he and, he and Martha were under 24-hour surveillance. They wow. were watched constantly, everything they said, everything they did. Um, and so uh, in the end, all the Czech missionaries are expelled and uh, they cancel the registration of the church. And um, the saints. And so nobody can worship anymore. Yeah, the saints at that point don't even have the opportunity to hold branch meetings. So it's just home church, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They try it a little bit, you know, they gather, you know. But any meetings are going to raise suspicions, no. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and so he goes home. And so then, it sounds like a little bit worse <clears throat> under communism than under the Nazis? Um. Well, I, I think during the war they weren't allowed to do anything. At least so they weren't. Similar. They weren't killing Jews. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So he's he's back and uh, in 1964, and he's sending cryptic letters, and he's still, you know, doing everything he can from Utah for them. For the this time yeah. with the communists yeah. in charge. So 1964. Um, President McKay calls him in again and says, we want you to go and you just be tourists. And you just, you know, <laughs> you just go around and visit people and it'll help them, you know. So a tourist they, visa, how long can that last? That can't um, last just long. a couple of weeks. Okay. Just a couple of weeks. So just go but, for a few yeah, weeks, but like they a are, vacation. They are watched like crazy. They are watched like crazy. Because the uh, communists know his history as well. Yeah, yeah. Well... They've still got his mugshot, you know. Oh yeah, you said so, he was yeah. The so Czechoslovakia's yeah, most wanted. Yeah. <laughs> so they come home, and you know they met the saints, and for them that was, you know, that was just incredible. He's like, he's like having an apostle or having a prophet there. Yeah. And um, but he he came back and he said, you know, I, President McKay, I, I want to go, not as a tourist. I want to go officially. Um, and I want to. I think I can convince them into giving us reestablishing the mission and giving us permission to hold public meetings. Wow! Again. What would give him that I'm, idea? I, he said, I'm going to see if I can, you know, uh, meet with the minister, the interior minister, the interior minister, I think what he called him. Okay. And um, I think I can open the door. So, Miss <laughs> McKay said, okay. But you're not taking Martha, <laughs> so um, this is. We don't kind want of, her to get arrested too. Yeah, and he was kind. Of, he tried. He tried and tried to get in to see the ministers and couldn't. And every ten years at the time in Czechoslovakia, they held a large athletic festival like the Olympics, and uh, it was called Sokol Slet. <clears throat> and the events were being held in Prague that year, and so Wally um, found an excuse to obtain a visa to go to Sokol Slet. And uh, all the nations are invited, and he's there in Prague. And uh, this is 1965. And uh, he goes to Sokol Slat with a member of the church. There's 25,000 people. A cameraman spots him, figures out he's an American, and asks him to stand <laughs> in front of the camera and tell, you know, tell about his impressions. Oh. So he... <laughs> He stands up and basically kind of bears his testimony, and they are not happy. And uh, he still hasn't been to see the minister of public affairs, or and uh, all of a sudden uh, he's got four secret police at his door. Oh no! His hotel, and uh, they're in a big black car, and they say, uh, "You are uh, going to go down to the government offices, and we're going to have you meet with the ministry 
Minister of the Interior. Which is what he'd want. Which is what he wanted. But that's not what the minister thought he you know, was going to talk about. <laughs> and so um, he got in the car. They went down, and, uh, and uh, they started interrogation of him. And pretty rough, pretty hmm. tough. And he, it's, it's the only time Wally's son said he'd ever seen his dad scared when he talked about it. And um, he, he was accused of subversive, subversive activities, stirring up the people, inciting them against the regime, trying to establish the church illegally, bringing in missionaries. And he said, I'm not trying to do any of that. that I want to come see you and see you know, if we could be officially recognized again. And uh, one of the interrogators is the very man that he was trying to trying to see. So what a, what an incredible blessing! But um, <laughs> when he gets done and he asks, you know, to be the church to be registered, the uh, interior minister will say, "Communism espouses religious freedom, and we've already let seventeen organizations in the country, and that's enough. And you're not one of them." Oh. And so um, he then says, uh, we want you out of the country tonight. And he'll say, well, I, you know, I, have, a, I have a plane ticket out of, I think, Poland or somewhere. Um, and they said, no, you will leave tonight. And they escort him to the border. The border of? The border of Czechoslovakia. And what's the other country? Uh, I don't. But it's not Poland. I think it's Germany. I think he's at the German-Czechoslovakia border. When he, Just because that's closer? Is that yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he and like, he goes home and... You're screwed out of that ticket, yeah, sorry. He, you know, he was sure he could do it. Uh, that was in 1965. And uh, he will come home, get cancer, and he passes away in 1968. Oh, wow. Before it ever happened. But it will happen eventually. It will happen, meaning the church will gain yes, recognition. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so he died. You said in sixty eight. Sixty eight. And so at cancer. that point, his wife becomes the first female mission president. Yeah. In church. De facto, history, we think. yeah, de facto. Until they can call somebody else. And so, it was only a couple months. But. Okay. So she's sending letters basically to Czechoslovakia, oh, yeah, doing the same thing he was yeah, doing. Yeah, she keeps up the communication and just trying to help out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. she can't authorize ordinations or yeah. things like that, but. Um, so she does that for a few months and then, uh, they and, call somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Now, you know, I always wonder, I am an old, I'm a sports nut. There used to be a basketball player for BYU. I think his name was Kresimir Kosic. I remember this. Was, yes. He was from Czechoslovakia, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. Was he called to be the new Mrs. President or anything? I don't think so, no. Okay. I I think they just combined it with another mission. and, and Okay. Yeah. And just said, we're just going to let the local leaders that are there handle things for as long as they can. I mean, he's before my time. I don't remember him, but I remember the name. I, I remember know. the name, too. My parents said he was an amazing basketball player yeah. Um, yeah. for BYU. Yeah. And... Uh, Anyway, I was just curious about that. So, uh, is there anything else you can tell us about this story? It's just uh, amazing as I um, met, have met with his missionaries. Yeah, I bet. Uh, as they talk about him. And um, he's just, uh, you just see the Lord's hand in his life in an amazing way. Mm -hmm. And uh, really preparing those people in Czechoslovakia. For what was to come, and then um, eventually, of course, um, the church will go in and is in um, doing wonderfully well um, at this point in time. I guess that's the end of the story, as far as as we know, with the Torontos and the Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Okay. Um, they have done. Uh, it, it's um, um, one of his uh, grandsons established the um, Joseph Toronto Society. Oh. And they work with the mission presidents and the missionaries um, uh, in Czechoslovakia, and it's a kind of a humanitarian uh, service in his name that still meets and uh, functions in uh, Czechoslovakia. Oh, so they still kind of remember him. Yeah, he's known. I mean, if you ask someone, if you ask someone uh, 
who's been on a mission to Czechoslovakia or they're from Czechoslovakia and the Latter-day Saint, you know, and you say Wally Toronto, then they will go, oh yeah, I know who Wally is. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Mary Jane Woodger, author of Mission, President, or Spy. So this is a great story. It's one you definitely haven't heard and it's not very well known. So I recommend this book for sure. In our next conversation, we're going to move on to another book that uh, Mary Jane helped write with uh, Dr. Casey Griffiths, 50 Relics of the Restoration. And we're going to talk about more about a couple of objects that she found really interesting in this book. You know, I told you I was a home ec teacher, so I sewed. Okay. And um, one of my favorites is um, this 55 cent dress by Bell Spafford. Oh, wow. And Bell Spafford was a former Relief Society Relief president. Society president. General Relief she Society was president. for decades. Yeah. She was for decades. And um, she, <laughs> she she's one of my favorites. She did not like Relief Society at all. And then she ends up being the general. Relief oh, that's Society funny. President. Thanks for listening, and I hope you to continue to enjoy Gospel Tangents. Consider becoming a Patreon or go to gospeltangents.com slash shop, and you can get a cool tie, a hat, or even a nice mug. You can also get a sweatshirt, so check it out at gospeltangents.com slash shop.